Okay, hi everyone, it's Jo here from DBE Solutions. Now to start this off, I've got a question for you. Have you ever had one of those weeks where you get to the week, uh, the end of the week, and you say to yourself, where the hell did that week go? Or perhaps, you know what, I don't know what I did this week. What did I actually achieve? And then have you ever had that week more than once? Or maybe you feel like you're actually getting that quite regularly. Now, it's a fairly common thing and it's something that you actually want to implement some strategies to avoid. One, because if you're feeling that you're not getting a lot done in the week, the chances are you're probably not getting quite as much done as you could if you worked really effectively. And the second point being that who wants to go through every week without feeling like you've achieved something at the end of it? So feeling achievement at the end of your working week is a really great way to then drive more effectiveness in the next week because feeling good about ourselves makes ourselves work better and then we feel good about ourselves and it's this beautiful cycle. So we just keep improving and working more effectively and, in, and enjoying our work. So today I'm going to teach you about a, a strategy that I use and it's called what I like to call a work plan. Now it's not a particularly new strategy. It's a fairly fundamental principle in time management. Uh, different people call it different things. Uh, Andrew Morello calls it the perfect week. Um, I call it a work plan. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to set one up and then I'm going to show you how you can um, implement it using MS Outlook. Now you might have some sort of other software but uh, if it's task calendar based it should still function in a similar way but I use Outlook so that's what I'll show you and then we'll run through how you will actually apply it week to week. So this uh, the format we've got here today is what I like to call get more done in your week. So that's the purpose of it. We're not doing it to complicate things so we just remember that because sometimes these time management principles if you over analyze them and over implement them you actually cause more uh, complication in your week than you need to and it's kind of the opposite of what you're after so I've called it quite simply get more done in your week remember that that's what you want to do and keep it nice and simple so that you actually can get more done in your week and it doesn't stress you out all right let's get started so the first thing I like to do is to write up my key activities. Now when we're looking at this, we're not looking at it from a this week or next week point of view. At the moment, we're looking at a standard week. So what we're talking about here is quite honestly, quite a gross generalization. So, and this, this might change, but do what you would consider a nicely balanced week for you right now. So if you could think of the main activities that in a perfect week you would achieve, then write those down. Now what you want to do is keep them at a reasonably high level. You don't want to go into specific little task areas. For me, I like to keep it at a functional area because my role covers a lot of different functions. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one that I prepared earlier. So this is how I do it. Now I love technology, but sometimes with this sort of thing, the old pen and paper is just the best way to go. So I grab a pen and paper and I write down my main things at a reasonably high level that I want to get done. So as you can see there, as I said before, it's very largely around functional areas because obviously I run an entire business. I cover a lot of different areas with my role. Now if your role covered a lot of different projects, you might actually have the project name as some of your functional areas. Or if you had some different key activities and lots of little tasks on projects, you might have project work as your sort of functional area or key activity and then within project work you would have all the tasks. But for this purpose, we want it to be fairly high level. So remember what I said to you about keeping it simple? Part of keeping it simple is setting it up in a way that is at a high level so when you actually look at it, because we're going to set it up visually, when you actually look at it, it looks simple. So if I actually wrote down all the tasks I have to do for that, one, that's a task list. That's not what we're doing here. I can show you that in another session. But two, it would be a huge overwhelming list and I would probably get to the end of my week and feel like I haven't achieved any of it. So keep it at a fairly high level. I wouldn't do any more than 10 blocks. If you're doing more than 10 blocks or chunks or functional areas or key activities, whatever term you want to use, if you're doing more than 10, you probably need to 
look at it a bit higher level, so group some of them up. So this is mine, and so what we're going to do for this example is I'm actually going to show you how I put together my work plan so that you can go from there and apply your own. So the next step we do is when you're looking at those points, some of them will be the ones that are less urgent or less reactive. Now what I mean by that is the ones that get missed. So everything, the more important, or well not important, urgent, more urgent things that pop up in the week, they actually tend to override these really important things and you tend to get to the end of the week and go, oh crap, I didn't get that done in this week again. Now, if you are familiar with the, the management matrix with the quadrants, it's quadrant two that you want to be working in to be really effective. If you've read, you know, um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, these are one of the principles they talk about. So you want to be working in on activities that are important but not urgent. Now, a lot of us, when we're not working as effectively as we can, are working on the urgent and not the important. Think using your inbox and the emails coming in to um, predict what work you're going to do or to generate your activities from. So this is a way to get yourself working back in the important as much as possible. And for that reason, we're actually going to start with the important so that we factor that in into the week in a time where we're more likely to actually get it done. So if you leave your important until Friday afternoon, and you know Friday afternoon is traditionally a really hectic time and Friday afternoon just gets away from you, then you're actually setting yourself up by, to fail by putting an important piece of work there because probably you're not going to get it done. So what you want to do is you want to pick those important items and you're going to put them in your work plan first and really think about when would be the most likely chance in your week that you would actually commit to getting that done. So you've got the highest chance of success for yourself. Now, if it's something like uh, thinking work or something you find a bit challenging and you really need to clear your head um, or you need to not be around people so you don't have interruptions, think about then where you can place that in your work plan so that you can have that sort of environment. So, for example, it might be really early in the morning. It might be first thing in the morning is where you need to do that sort of thing. If you like to make phone calls and catch up with people, that might be really good around a lunchtime. So it's also about learning where you work best and in what format. And that's, that also comes down to awareness, which is a really helpful, um, useful skill that you can teach yourself uh, to also become more effective. So this will help you with that as well. So you've got that list that we prepared earlier. Now you've picked in that the items that are important, but they're not urgent. So you're not having emails popping in that you're reacting to. You're not having client or um, employee phone calls and things that you're having to react to, but they're just really important things that you want to make sure you touch on every week or every fortnight. So for me, finance is one. Who's excited by finance? Not me. So it tends to drop off the list, but it's incredibly, incredibly important. So that's one for me. Um, and then some marketing activities as well. They're probably my two sort of uh, important ones that I just tend to miss all the time. And as you can see, I've actually written those first because I was kind of already thinking in this way. But yours might not be first. Probably on your list, they're going to be last because you probably thought of the things you do all the time, um, sort of you do them easier. You've probably got them up the top. So if you're having trouble working out which ones are the ones that you um, don't get done in the week, it's probably more likely they're the ones at the bottom of your list. But anyway, so select those for yourself. We're going to put them in the work plan first. Now, as I said to you, we're using Outlook here. You can see I've got a work plan. This is the beginnings of the framework of my work plan. I've picked marketing and finance and also some HR because that's another one that's particularly important. And I've also put a little bit of BD on Friday at about lunchtime. So, you know, lunches and things. So I've decided I do my financial processing Friday afternoon, I do my financial management Wednesday afternoon, and my marketing activities Wednesday morning, and by that I mean like content creation and things like that. So marketing and financial management, I need to have a really clear space for that. So I actually, um, I work out of the office on that day, and I focus purely on those items. And that's, ha that's how I've decided that that's a really good way to set my week up. Now, again, I've chosen Wednesday for that because Monday we have a lot of team meetings. Tuesday people need me a lot, so Wednesday is a good day to do that. 
So I've actually put thought into where I'm placing these items in my work plan. Now, while we're here, I'd just like you to have a look at the colors that we're using. So now I'm quite a visual person, so this, this might not apply for you. But when we're learning, there's lots of different ways to learn and there's lots of different ways to absorb information. So there's um, the, the visual aspect is a really important one that I find useful. And I think that layering different techniques on top of each other is a really good way to reinforce what we're learning and what we're trying to achieve. So applying color to grouping is a secondary way of helping our brain sort of recognize very quickly without having to think what that's about. So for me, that sort of purpley blue color, uh, the marketing and the HR actually look very similar on this screen, but they're, they're actually different. So the purpley blue HR is my HR color. And whenever I see that color, I think HR. And to me, when I think HR, I also see that color. So I've chosen that color even with some strategy and thought behind it. Finance, I always think of as green, you know, like green money, even though it's not even green in Australia, but that's where I've got that from. And so I've applied green to that because that makes sense to me. So then in our task list, we would apply the same colors. So that's category selection for your tasks. So we've applied categories to these blocks of time in our work plan. And we're also gonna have categories that are gonna to apply to the corresponding task for that block. Now I'm gonna explain this a bit more later and I'm not gonna go in depth into task lists and category setup in this session, that'll be a different one. But I will just quickly show you here my um, task list in its compressed form. So all the tasks are within these categories, but these are the categories. And you can see there that the colors are actually matching the colors of the work plan. So here, category DVE finance is green, and then on the work plan it was green. So I'll show you a bit more about that later, but it's, it's important to take note of that. And I also think it helps to break up the tasks when they're in different colors. So as you can look at that work plan, it, the red in the middle is very visibly different to the, the bluey purple that's alongside. And so it's, it's very clear in your mind without having to take that second to think about it, that that's actually a different activity. And I think that that's really important. Okay, so that's putting our less urgent, less reactive tasks in our work plan first keeping in mind when we think we're actually realistically going to be able to achieve that, so we set ourselves up for success. So point three, we're going to add in the other key activities in chunks. Now I've used the word chunks there, not that we didn't use chunks before, but I've just applied it so that um, you think about it in chunks because the key activities that you perform on a really daily basis, you often think of in smaller activity lists like you think oh I do that and I do that and I do that you don't think I do HR activities for example so I want you really especially in your daily jobs to not think of them at a task level think of them in chunks and when I use the word chunk there I'm thinking you know one two hour blocks you don't want your work plan to become a task list you have a task list for that this has got to be nice and simple so it feels like you can achieve it in the week so this one here that we've got showing now shows a few um, more activities in the week. Now what I've actually done for this one, and this is important before you put the other activities in, is I've actually just looked at some of my reoccurring meetings in my calendar. So you don't also want to replicate your calendar. So as you can see up the top here, I have actually created a secondary calendar called work plan. So this isn't on top, is, this isn't in your actual calendar. This is a second calendar. So you can turn it off or you can turn it on so you don't have to see it all the time. So you can see there, there's a whole lot of recurring meetings. I've obviously got to have some awareness of those meetings before I can plan my entire week, week in. So hopefully I wouldn't have needed to have looked at too much of that when I looked at the urgent reactive ones because you should have an idea of when you are likely to be able to fit those in and it's probably not gonna be when you're chockers with meetings. So however, for your daily stuff, these recurring meetings probably are in your mind daily things and so they're going to perhaps confuse you with setting up your work plan. So I always like to overlay them when I'm looking at my more um, urgent reactive tasks that tend to get a bit more get done a little bit easier in the week. Okay so that's the overlay there. Now this next one here is the work plan alone again but as you can see I have put in chunks and I have done quite large chunks here. 
um, to say what I'm going to be doing in these time periods. So I've got another little one down here for IT because I don't need to do a lot of that, but I want to make sure I touch on it every week because it's one of those things that um, tends to be pushed aside. Um, or what also happens is because I have a natural interest in technology, I end up doing it a little bit sporadically, but I still actually do it. So this is a way for me just to think, well, I'm doing it. Let's do it with a little bit of structure. So I'm making sure I'm on the right path and achieving things. So I'm using my time really effectively. Now, as you saw on my work plan, uh, on my standard calendar, sorry, I have a whole bunch of meetings on Mondays. Mondays is my team meeting day. So it is chockers. So you know what? I've just blocked it out. Monday is team meeting day. So probably I might get a few other little things done in there, but I'm not going to stress myself out for the purpose of a work plan. Monday's a write-off for anything that's not team related. So that's fine, then I know that. Uh, then what I've got on Tuesday is more sort of work stuff. So I have, again, in my standard calendar, this is a technical time. I'm free for people to ask me questions on projects. That fits into that time, which is kind of my working on projects time in my mind. And the rest of it is very much what those reactive core items were that we started with. Now, one thing I want you to really pay attention to, because this is very important and something that I see people do, um, what I, it's not wrong, there's no wrong or right, but I think it's something that people do that causes more stress than it's worth. And that is, look at these empty spaces between these blocks. Leave them empty. You can't actually follow a work plan every week perfectly, so don't try to. I'm a real believer in setting something up that is actually achievable. And so there's this nice balance, I think, between striving to do something really great or try, striving to push yourself and making it achievable. So you don't want to make it too easy. Like It's going to be a little bit of a push because you, you're trying to improve yourself. But you don't want to make it so difficult that you're going to get to the end of the week and fail because you won't implement it. It's not a sustainable solution if you're not setting yourself up for success. You have to implement something and then feel good about it to enable it to be sustainable. So keep gaps in there. Things are going to pop up. You know that. Meetings are going to come in that you weren't planning for. So that's fine. Expect it. Leave some gaps. So that's what I've got there. So that's, that is actually basically setting it up. That's all you do. Now remember, gross generalization. So if we go back here, my week very rarely actually looks like that. But that's the plan to start with. And it's about awareness. So now when my week doesn't look like that, I have to consciously move things. And then I'm aware of moving them. Now think of this um, BD on Friday, for example. If BD moves from Friday, I have to consciously move that appointment as if it was a meeting. That's how we're going to treat it when we're using it. So then when it's moved, I've got to put it somewhere else. So maybe next week I have to do um, four hours of BD because I've had to move it. Or maybe I've decided, no, I can actually skip it this week and I'm deleting it. But that's the same as cancelling a meeting. It's a conscious decision and you have to go, do I need to do that or not? Is this important to me or not? And the fact that it's in your work plan makes you evaluate that. So that's a really good thing to keep in mind. And don't, again, set yourself up for failure. Set the correct expectation for yourself in the first place. And that's it. This is a generalization. This is a goal and a guideline and a framework. So think of it as a foundation for how your week actually going to go. It's going to drive awareness and it's going to help you try and um, react, not react, but work in on those important things, those, those quadrant two items, as opposed to your urgent reactive emails coming in the inbox type items. So using your work plan. At the beginning of the week, you're going to look at your work plan and your calendar. And you're going to apply some level of adjustment and set it up for how it's a little bit more realistic for the week. Now, this isn't a big exercise. I'm talking half an hour. Now, I actually like to do it Wednesday afternoon of the previous week. That's my favorite time to do it, Wednesday or Thursday. So you can see here, plan this week's work is actually Wednesday afternoon. Now, you can do it Monday. There's no right or wrong here. The reason I like Wednesday or Thursday afternoon is because it makes me think about it before I'm in the week. So I can kind of pre-plan a little bit if I have to get meetings in with people. If, you know, I'm thinking, oh, oh yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish that next week. And then I realize, oh, I don't have time to do that on Thursday or Friday, which means I'm going to have to do it on Wednesday. And actually, 
I need something from someone to be able to achieve my goals. So I'm going to have to give them a heads up that now I'm going to have to be doing this on Wednesday. So that's why I have typically tried to do this Wednesday or Thursday so I can give other people a heads up if I need them and so that if I have to do anything or organize anything myself, I've given myself a little bit more time to achieve that. Um, And the other reason it's useful is you might remember a meeting or something that you have next week that you actually had to prepare for and maybe you wanted to do that this week. And it's also, as a secondary thing, a nice little reminder, while you've still got some time left in this week, to get those items done. But it actually doesn't matter. So, And it'll be a personal thing. I like to do it in an afternoon. You might prefer a morning. You might like it over lunch. It doesn't matter. And you might have to play with that a little bit. So that's the other thing about these work plans is they're not set in stone. And you don't know what you're going to need until you try it. So just put something in. And it's not wrong if you change it. Like you're going to learn more about yourself through this activity. You'll have that awareness. You'll learn that maybe, you know, you don't have to do IT every week. So you make it every fortnight. So we've got reoccurrences on here. You can see the little repeating symbols. At the moment, I've set them up to repeat every week. This is every week. But you might actually learn that some things only need to be every fortnight. And so then you can set it up for every fortnight. There's nothing wrong with that. So it's going to evolve as your work style evolves and also as as your business or your um role or whatever it is you're working on the time evolves as well because you know we don't live in a static world so things do change so again the expectation settings it's okay to change so don't create an environment where now you've got a plan and you have to stick to it and if you don't follow it that's a bad thing so again that nice little balance so this is my plan I'm grabbing that at the beginning of the week I'm applying it to my calendar and I'm adjusting it for the week Now, say I'm in the plan, let's take financial management, it's uh, one o'clock on a Wednesday. This is brilliant because it's going to pop up a reminder for me. It's going to say, you're doing financial management now. And so if I am, if I have gotten wrapped up into phone calls or emails or something, which is very easy to do, you know, sitting there and checking all the unread emails that are popping into your inbox is, is very easy to get caught up into. So I'm doing that and all of a sudden pops up. Ooh, financial management. Now, I very easily could have got to four o'clock on Wednesday without even remembering I had to do financial management. But the great thing about this is it's going to give me a reminder just as if that was a meeting with someone else. So it creates a little bit of accountability. It does obviously take some self-discipline because you've got to say, oh, I'm, I'm actually committing to this to a certain level and I've got to be accountable to myself. But okay, so we're in financial management, one o'clock and my little pop-ups come up. It's saying to me, time to do financial management. So what I do now is I go to my task list that I showed you earlier and I go, everything's collapsed. So I'm not getting my mind bombarded with a million different tasks and feeling overwhelmed. If you're anything like me, I have a huge task list. There's lots in there and it can get overwhelming. So now what I do is I expand just the category that's what I'm working on. And so there's my DVE finance tasks And I can actually see there what I have to do and I can work through that. And that will keep me very focused. Now, they all have deadlines on them. Well, some of them, there's a whole lot with none in this one. Um, I don't actually have a lot of deadlines with finance, so that's not the best example for that. Uh, But they would typically have deadlines and they would have details within them and I would be checking them off and making sure I did them. So then when I get an email in that I'm going to do on Wednesday afternoon in finance management time, I flag it under finance and I can file it away. So I don't have to action it then and there. So that then helps you with that reactive inbox um, sort of cycle that you get into too. So if it's something that is in your work plan and you don't have to do it before the time you've scheduled it, you just flag it, categorize it, and then it will automatically trigger you when you're in this headspace and time period where you've set yourself up for that activity. So hopefully that makes sense. The other technique I do, and I do a little bit of a combination of both, um, and it depends a little bit probably on the level and if it's repeatable. So this is where I've actually opened up the task. So here we've moved on from finance. We're on um, Thursday and we're doing a bit of HR. So in HR, I have repetitive stuff that I pretty much touch on every HR week. And so when I open up my HR Uh, appointment in my work plan, it actually has the list of things I want to do. Now, 
I wouldn't go in and write specific tasks in there. If it's a different thing every week and they're all specific tasks, they would be in the task list. This is more of an agenda. So if you think you have a meeting appointment in your calendar and it's, it's got an agenda in it, this is effectively the same thing. This is a meeting with yourself and it's got your agenda of what you want to work on. Um, because that does stop you from going into your emails where you can get distracted. So it's straight away there, follow the agenda, tick it off. I really like the strike through function in the font because I like to look like I'm checking things off. It makes me feel like I've achieved stuff. So that's another good little tip. So there we are back at the work plan. Now this one here you'll notice I added some extra things in. Now these are just some optional things which I don't necessarily do but they might be helpful for you. If you're having trouble keeping on top of your emails and you are struggling with this transition to not working out of your inbox then what I suggest is you actually put some time each day for checking your emails. So You've got here three till four, that's checking your email. So you actually allowed yourself an hour to sit there and go through your inbox. That doesn't mean you don't ever look at it outside of that. If you read all the, you know, the hardcore theory on it, you're not supposed to. You're supposed to just look at it at that time. But I feel, again, with you know, there's a balance between that. And in this day and age, if you're in a busy work environment, I don't think that it's, ex it, that it's, it's really going to work if you say I'm only going to check my emails between three and four. So, again, you're going to set yourself up for failure. And you're probably going to annoy some of your teammates and, and things like that if they're actually, if you're in an environment where there is an expectation that you're a bit on emails. So it doesn't mean you don't check emails out of that time, but it means that in your mind, if emails pop in earlier and you have noticed them, but they don't need actioning then and there, you might just set them aside and do them in this email time where you just do some quick email actions. So again, it just helps you to schedule that time in as opposed to sitting there and reacting to emails. That's one little technique that might be useful. Uh, this is another one, lunch. If you are someone who struggles having a break for lunch, uh, especially if you're really busy, put lunch in your work plan. Now, I don't because a lot of my meetings get done over lunch, So I and I, I'm always hungry, so I don't have a problem having lunch. But if you are someone who does have trouble fitting lunch in, put it in your work plan and work with that. So you want your work plan to be sustainable. You're not going to be able, if you're feeling stressed because you've got all these items in your plan, that you end up working through lunch all the time, that's not sustainable either. So put it in there. And if you have a lunch which you like to take longer because you because you meet up with a friend or something, put it in there for a bit longer. You know, try and make it achievable is I guess what I'm saying there. So that's the work plan there. Now, that's basically all my slides on that. So I'm just going to go back to a standard this sort of overview one and I'm just going to run through some of my notes and see if there's anything else that I haven't mentioned. So we're going to write up the high and medium level activities first. We might group or subgroup them. So remember that's about individual projects or activities versus groups of projects and activities. So within finance payroll is an activity on its own but actually I put that in under the group of financial processing so that it includes some some other activities as well. I wouldn't sit payroll separately to, I don't know, um, payables or something, for example, because they're, they're task level. It's going to chock us up my work plan. So if you look at that work plan now, like if you look at that, that actually looks achievable. I, I don't know about you, but I look at that and I don't feel this cluttered busyness. I actually look at that and I feel a little bit of a sense of calm and I feel like that actually, if I got all that done in the week, that would be a good week. And that's what you want it to be. You need it to be something that feels achievable and it feels like you would feel good at the end of it if you were able to achieve that. And then on top of that, it needs to be realistic so you do have the opportunity to achieve it. Um, so any ad hoc tasks, I typically don't put them in my work plan. So I leave them for the gaps. So they'll be in my task list. I have a category called today, which is things I need to do today. Um, and that's on my quick click which is in Outlook, so um, I'll do a separate session. If you don't know these terms and, and what I'm talking about, cover it in a separate session. But that's sort of where I put that ad hoc stuff. So I don't put that in my work plan. The only things I sometimes put in my work plan is if there is a today task or something I really need to do in the week that is really, really important and 
it's one of those important things that isn't urgent for maybe a phone call that I I keep putting off and not making. I might slot that into a half an hour slot and I might make it bright red or something like that so I see it and do it. But very, very minimally because if you start doing that all the time, you'll start not taking notice of them and you want them to be important when you, when you do pop them in there. Um, just a reminder that those big chunks obviously are going to have multiple small chunks in them and then they may have tasks as well in your task list. So they might have those agenda items and then they might have tasks as well. Um, if you do have a bunch of repeat of ad hoc tasks, so I'm talking if you're a support, uh, you're in a support role or you're in a role that actually has an element of reactiveness to it, schedule that in. So you might not know what they are, but you know that they happen. So if, if you ask yourself, okay, well, I have these tasks that pop in all the time and they're due tomorrow, and then you say, oh, well, how often would I get that? And your answer is every day. Schedule time in every day for ad hoc tasks. So that's a chunk. You just don't know what's in it yet. And if you don't happen to get ad hoc tasks in that chunk, it doesn't matter. You do something else instead. But at least you've got it there. And then what happens is at the beginning of the week, if you realize that one of your days is not quite as clear as you thought and you're not going to get your ad hoc task um, sort of chunk of work done in that day, you know when you're doing your planning that that's not going to happen. And you can tell the people who are sending you those tasks, just letting you know, on Wednesday, I'm not going to have time for this because of you know training or whatever it is I'm doing. So I just want to let you know that you have to let me know in advance so that I can either try and fit them in on Tuesday, say if it's Wednesday, or just be aware that you're not going to, I'm not going to have the opportunity to do them until Thursday. So again, it helps you to help other people to be more organized and it helps you to see what's coming ahead so you don't have the old, you know, lack of planning on your part constitutes panic on mine happening. So it, it really helps everyone. And in a team environment, if you can get everyone doing this, then the, the whole team just works really cohesively towards the same sort of thing. Um, okay, so the one important thing that I think I've said but I want to reiterate is to keep the level separate from the task list. This is not a task list. If you see a bunch of tasks on there, you'll get overwhelmed and you won't look at it, I promise you. Um, so 80% at least should be big chunks. 20% could be sort of half hour, hour chunks depending on the type of work you do but no more than that. Uh, Group the like items in your task list by colour and category and make sure that the colour is representative. So when you look at that colour, make sure it means it has some sort of alignment to that word or that activity for you. That's really useful. Okay, they're my main points there, which is good. So I just want to run through again those main overview points. I'm just going to flick back through this. Okay, number one, we're going to write up our key activities. Do that on paper or wherever you like. Two, we're going to get the less reactive or urgent ones that always get forgotten first. We're going to put them in and we're going to think about where we're putting them so that we've got the best chance of achieving that. We're going to align it to the categories in our task list. Then we're going to add in the other key activities in chunks. Remember, your natural tendency will be to think of these in tasks because that's how you do them during the week because these are the natural ones that you want to do so keep them in chunks. Keep your current calendar with the recurring meetings in mind with this and there they are in chunks nice and simply and then you're going to use your work plan so that really comes down to making sure you have some time every week where you are committed and self-disciplined enough to reviewing it setting it up for the next week and keeping it realistic and achievable. And if you do that, look, it's, it's not going to be perfect all the time, so don't expect it to. Don't be harsh on yourself if it isn't. But if you have this work plan and it's fairly well implemented, then you will actually find that you get more done and you touch base on those items that tend to get forgotten more regularly and that will keep them rolling along. Even if you don't sit down and do a whole chunk on them, if you touch on them every week, they'll roll along, which is a really good way to just keep achieving things so you keep going all the time. So I hope that that's been helpful. Um, so start applying your work plan now and good luck with that. If you need any more tips on Outlook, 
please let me know and um, we can point you in that direction. And if you have any feedback about this, let me know. And also, particularly, I think what would be interesting is if there's any feedback regarding non-outlook use of this sort of principle. And if you've got any other ideas on the work plan through your own experiences, we'd love to hear from them, uh, hear about them. So drop me a line at joe.schneider at dvesolutions.com.au or uh, hit us up on our Facebook page. Thanks very much. Bye.